Welcome to this comprehensive guide on drug route administration. In this video, we'll look into the various routes through which medications can be administered, look at the advantages, look at other considerations and the best practices going forward. Before we begin, let's understand that the route of drug administration plays a crucial role in determining the effectiveness, speed of onset and the potential side effects of a drug. It is essential to choose the right route based on different factors such as the patient's condition, drug properties and the desired therapeutic outcome. First, let's explore the different routes of drug administration. The first one is the oral route. The oral route is the most common, most convenient route of administration. Drugs are administered through the mouth and then it is swallowed. Absorption occurs primarily in the GIT, that's the gastrointestinal tract, and then it is there, there are variable absorption rates. There's potential for degradation by stomach acid, and there is a first pass metabolism in the liver. First pass metabolism is when the drug undergoes some form of metabolism in the liver before it gets into circulation, thereby reducing the concentration of the drug in the bloodstream. The second one is sublingual or buccal root. This way, the drugs are placed under the tongue or in between the cheeks, that's the buccal cavity, you know. And then they, as, there's absorption directly into the bloodstream through the mucous membrane in that area. And then the onset of action is very rapid and then it bypasses first pass metabolism as it doesn't go through the liver and all that. The, the example is nitroglycerin that's used to treat angina pectoris and some opioids also vasoprim in some patients. And also um, the Fedipine, when you want to give patients that have a very high blood pressure their medication too. The third one is the inhalation route. Here the drugs are administered via inhalation into the respiratory tracts. This route has a very high rate of absorption because of the large surface area of the lungs and also because of the rich blood supply in that area. Commonly used for conditions such as uh, asthma and COPD. And then the examples are the, in, the um, nebulizers and the inhalers that we use. The fourth route is topical. Topical drugs are applied directly onto the skin or mucous membrane. They, they have localized effects with minimal systemic absorption, means it doesn't really go into the blood. It is used for conditions like skin conditions, pain relief, and some hormone replacement therapy. Some of them can include creams, ointments, patches that we put on the skin, and also the eye drops. Eye drops are considered to be topical agents. Number five is the rectal route. With the rectal route, the drugs are administered into the rectum. It is useful when oral administration is not feasible. For example, in patients having nausea or patients that are vomiting. Absorption can be erratic and might be incomplete in these patients. Examples are suppositories and also some drugs we use um, for enema. Oh, now that we have explored the roots, let's discuss some important considerations for drug administration. It's important to note first thing, patient factors. The age of a patient, the weight of a patient, and the medical history of a patient can all influence drug absorption and metabolism. You have to consider the allergies, consider the comorbidities, and also consider the contraindications. For example, a patient who has been stooling and vomiting will benefit a lot from parenteral medication, either intramuscular or intravenous. While a patient who is not having difficulty to swallow or not vomiting might benefit more from oral medication. Patients do not have to dictate to their doctor or caregiver their choice of drug administration route. Like some people saying, oh, I prefer injections to tablets. No, it's not right. Oh, number four, monitoring and evaluation. Monitoring patients for therapeutic responses and adverse reactions is very important especially when you are giving them parenteral doses, you need to adjust the dose or routine as necessary based on individual response. Like a patient starting on with IV, but after getting better, you switch to um, oral medication. Timing also is very important in, case, in patients, especially the ones on inpatient admission. All forms of, of drug administration can be given as outpatients, except for intravenous, which might need some level of monitoring in case of adverse drug reaction. In summary, 
Understanding the various routes of drug administration is essential for healthcare professionals to optimize therapeutic outcomes and minimize risk. By considering patient factors, drug properties, proper administration techniques, healthcare providers can ensure safe and effective treatment. Thank you for watching my comprehensive guide on drug route administration. Remember to consult with healthcare professionals for personalized advice and recommendation. Stay informed and stay safe. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative content on healthcare and pharmacology. I'll see you in the next video.